Hi, I'm Ms. Sloan, and this is a test prep for AP Biology, and we are focusing on the equations and formulas. And I'm going to help you with the purpose, like why are you using this formula? What does it relate to in your content? And then the practice, how you go about doing or using that formula. So let me make myself a little bit smaller. Remember, these are all the equations and formulas that you need to be comfortable with. And in this video, we're gonna focus right here on rate and growth. It is probably having to do with your unit eight, if you're following the units as um, directed by the College Board. So this is in your population ecology chapter. All right. So taking a look at this, first of all, this it looks intimidating, but it's not. All dy over dt means is the amount of change over time. And so the second equation, and I'm going to give you some more specific examples in just a minute. Okay. This just means the change in your population over time. Another way to say that is the change in your population over time, and that's going to equal to your birth rate minus your death rate. Okay, and usually when they say rate, they're talking per capita or per 1,000. Um, but you need to look at whatever your, your population size is that they give you, all right? And then you have two different formulas, exponential growth versus logistic growth. And I'm going to differentiate between those two right now. Okay. So when you study populations and you look to uh, see how they grow and the manner in which they grow, there's two extremes. So one extreme is exponential growth. These types of organisms are usually fairly small. They could have tens, hundreds, thousands of offspring. They do not care for their offspring. They are not planners. They are eat, drink, for tomorrow we may die. They're just taking advantage of the resources they have. You will see a lag phase at the beginning, and then you will see exponential growth that is typically followed by some sort of crash when they run out of resources. The other extreme is logistic growth. These organisms are usually larger. They could be mammals and um, they will have several reproductive events in their lifetime and they usually have fewer offspring and they care for them. You can see as their population increases, it starts to slow down and it slows down due to environmental resistance. They're probably running out of food or mates or um, other resources and they're, they're very competitive. So as their numbers reach what's called, and I'm going to draw a line here for you right here, that's called the carrying capacity. As their numbers reach the carrying capacity, the maximum number of, of um, individuals you can have in that particular area, then they start to hover, sometimes a little above, sometimes a little below. So when you're talking about a logistic growth model, then you're going to have to have carrying capacity and how close you are to the carrying capacity working in as um, affecting your population growth. So let's look at an example of that. All right. So let's say you're in a population of 600 squirrels. So right away, you should say, okay, N equals 600. Okay. And they say the per capita birth rate, okay, is 0.06. So this is your B and your per capita death rate is 0.12. Now, right away, you should be going, oh my gosh, the birth rate is 0.06, but the death rate is 0.12. So that means there's more deaths per capita than there are births. So what should happen to your population? It should go down. So let's look at three typical questions they might ask you. What is the per capita growth rate of the population? So I just want to get you started and then you can pause me to see if you can do this. The growth rate, you're going to be looking at R, which equals the birth rate minus the death rate. Okay, then in the second question, they ask you, what is the actual number of squirrels that die during this particular period? Well, to know the change in your population over time, okay, it's going to equal, it says the number that die. Well, my death rate is 0.12, and I need to multiply that by the number of individuals in my population, which is 600. And then similarly, it's asking you, down here in this question, what is the actual number of squirrels that are born during this period? So take a look at your birth rate, look to see how big your population is, and pause me just for a minute before I go over the answer. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here I go. 
<laughs> all right, so if you do the math on this, all right, so if I wanted to cal calculate the per capita um, growth rate, all I would need to do is R, R equals B minus D. So I took my birth rate minus my death rate, and I got this. That means my population is going down. What is the actual number of squirrels that die? I just took my death rate. They gave it to me right here. I multiplied it by the number of squirrels that I had, and the math there is 72 would die. And what is the actual number of squirrels that are born? I took my birth rate, multiplied it by 600, and I had 36 were born in that period, whereas 72 died. All right, let's level up a little bit more. So here, get down here. Here, you're looking at the change in population over time, right? That's the equation that you're looking at. And it equals R. Remember what R is equal to. R is equal to the birth rate minus the death rate times the size of the population, okay? And and it says here a population of 265 swans. So right away, you should know that 265 equals N, right? That's your population size, are introduced into Westlake. The population's birth rate is 0.341, and the death rate is 0.296. So predict the population size of the following year. So pause me just for a minute and try to work it out on a piece of paper, and then you can check to make sure you have it right. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. All right, so here we go. So in order to do this one, all I needed to do, let me move myself so I'm out of the way here, okay, is to look at that change in population over time. I just took 0.341, which was the birth rate, okay, and I subtracted off the death rate because remember this right here is equal to r and r is equal to the birth rate minus the death rate and i multiplied it by the population size of 265. so when i did birth minus death that's 0.045 times 265 gave me 11.9 or approximately 12 swans but what did the question actually ask it said predict the population size on the following year so i need to go okay it's going to change by 12 swans. What am I at? I'm at 265. That was my N. And then my change will give me 12 more for a total of 277. All right, let's do another practice one. I hope you got that one right. So now let's involve logistic growth. Let's involve the carrying capacity and how close we are to the maximum capacity of that particular environment. So that's logistic growth. So let's see how the equation changes. So it's still change in population over time right here is R, and you might see R max where it's the maximum biotic potential. We'll talk about that in class. It's still just birth rate minus death rate. That's all it means, okay? At the best possible birth rate and the least possible death rate, that is R max. So R times N, but now this is the new part that has been introduced. It basically means how close are you to the carrying capacity? Because you're gonna take the carrying capacity value, which will be given to you, subtract off how big your population is, and then divide it by your carrying capacity. The closer you are to the carrying capacity, right, the closer this number will be to zero. The farther you are away from your carrying capacity, the closer this number will be to one. All right, so try this one. If a population of dandelions is currently at 40 individuals, okay, so you can pause me at any point. I just, I'm just i just gonna give you a few more tips, and but pause me when you're ready to. If it's at 40 individuals, so that means N equals 40, right? And my R max is 0.2, so that's giving you this value right here, R max. Um, predict how many dandelions would be in the population the following month because they gave it to you per month, if the carrying capacity is 70. So that means that K equals 70. All right, you do the math and just pause me for a quick minute. All right, here I go. I'm going to go over the answer if you're ready. All right, so on this one, the change in population over time, okay, all I did was take R max, which was 0.2. It gave it to me right here. I multiplied it by the population size, that's N right here, which is 40. Then this K minus N, all we did is we said our carrying capacity was at 70. 
My population is at 40, right, over 70. That's this value right here. So that equals 8 times 0.43. When you do the math, then my change in population, taking into consideration my carrying capacity, is approximately 3.44 or 3. That means my population that was at 40, I'm going to add 3 to it, and I would predict that I would have 43 dandelions the next month. All right? So keep watching these videos, and we'll keep reviewing all the equations. And if you're one of my students, I'll see you in class.